Hello and welcome to Unbroken, the podcast with me, Madeleine Black, where I am speaking to people that I have met along my way, people that have inspired me and I'm sure will inspire you as well. They have overcome adversity and have bounced forward in life and now they're making a difference to other people and I really believe in the power of sharing stories. Today my guest is Emma Slade, but as you will learn later on, she also has another name. She was born in Kent and offered an unconditional place at Cambridge Uni. She was also educated at Goldsmiths in London and the London School of Economics, a highly successful international career in finance. She is a chartered financial analyst and worked as a senior analyst in London, New York, Hong Kong. Following a life-changing visit to Jakarta in Indonesia, where she was held up, held hostage at gunpoint, she discovered in herself a yearning to understand the deeper aspects of what it means to be a human being. She put her financial career on hold and began traveling and exploring yoga and meditation. She qualified as a British Wheel of Yoga instructor in 2003 and has since for over 15 years taught both yoga and meditation deepening her lifelong interest in Buddhism. A chance meeting with a Buddhist Lama on her first visit to Bhutan in 2011 left her to studying, led her to studying Buddhism with this Lama and eventually became the first and only Western woman to be ordained in the Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan as a Buddhist nun. Continuing with her energetic and entrepreneurial spirit, Emma has founded the UK charity Opening Your Heart to Bhutan in 2015. This has built medical and educational facilities to help special needs children in Bhutan. In 2017, she was given a Points of Life Award by the UK Prime Minister in recognition of her exceptional volunteering. Her first book, Set Free, was published in 2017 in April and details her inspirational story. Welcome, Emma, to my show. So lovely to have you here. How are you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, very good. Yes, yes. It's a long introduction. It makes yes. me feel quite old. <laughs> yes. I know, you know, I look to cut stuff out, but I don't want to cut any of it out. It's all important. So because my show is called Unbroken, the very first question I ask all of my guests is what does that word unbroken mean to you? It's a tricky one because um, everything is continually changing, yeah. actually. It's not a question of broken or unbroken actually it's not on those polar ends of this of the spectrum everything is continually changing uh, reforming re-emerging uh, so i'm not sure if i would use the words broken or unbroken i would just say it's a continual process of change that's with everything with our bodies with our minds with what we look at with the place we are everything is just continually changing the power of compassion can completely revolutionize your mind your worldview everything mm -hmm. i was speaking to another interviewee a woman called donna in australia who tried to kill herself she jumped off a bridge but survived against the odds it was like 30 meters up and she has the word hope and she calls it she says it stands for her help one person every day because it said it, it helps her to be kind and it helps them to receive the kindness and then it's like the ripple effect and I, I just thought that was lovely so she will go out of her way however she does it silently or you know when she would just help one person every day. Yeah I definitely would always wake up with some feeling of how can I do something good and helpful today what's you know how can I do that I would say more than just humans not just humans yeah any beings, animals, either plants, the soil, any, anything, to have the attitude of wishing to be benefiting um, uh, is not just for humans, in fact, it's for the whole situation. How and we if do you can, on this planet really, isn't it? Yeah, and I think it's, it, um, if one can develop the habit of waking up with that feeling of what joy could come from helping some being today, then if you can wake up with that thought, then the day will go better, yeah. you know. Um, and even in these difficult times, it's no different. I know COVID is apparently very different, but even in these difficult times, in fact, even more in these difficult yeah, times. Need kindness even more right now and compassion and being connected and, and all the rest of it. 
And I have seen so many great moments of kindness, actually, more than before. It's interesting what this uh, kind of collective experience does to people. Mm. Mm. And you, so you started your charity, Open Your Heart to Bhutan, because you were very touched by some limited lives that children have that you met over in Bhutan. Yeah, especially the children who maybe can't advocate for themselves so easily. Um, you know, if they have some special needs, uh, maybe cerebral palsy, conditions like this. So the charity has been very much about helping them. And I am personally very moved by those children. They just absolutely get me. Um, you know, Bhutan is a very emotionally private place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's quite full and sort of private about emotions. Uh, so Ugin always worries when I go to meet some of these children, then a little tear sheds from my eye afterwards. He's always like, Anila, you have to be strong, be strong. And I'm like, I know I am strong, Ugin, but it somehow they really touch my heart. So I stay close to them with the charity. I know everything that's going on. I know everything we're doing. I know lots of the children very uh, well. And because it keeps me really in touch with, I don't know, the heart of, of things for me, yeah. And it was a moment in the book where you're almost torn, you know, you're going down this path to becoming a nun and then you could potentially take over a charity and start you know being busy again and you think well I've left that life behind and yeah so how do you balance it all yeah mm -hmm. yeah life is very different for me now to, you know than it was maybe three or four years ago right so now I have to be much more disciplined with my time because otherwise there are worldly events of all kinds which are well intentioned uh, to help others in lots of different ways could take up a lot of my time, too much of my time. So for instance, now in January, just coming the whole month, I'm just doing practice and philosophical and Tibetan study. So what I have to do is I have to block out times in my diary and just tell everybody, nope, you're gonna have to do it without me that month because otherwise I've realized a mixing after a while can become quite, quite difficult. So I tend to have very clear times when I'm not available and then when I am available, then I'm like a whirlwind, <laughs> you know, getting things done. It's in both worlds, really, at some times. Yeah, I think until Oscar is older, I think it'll be like that. Once Oscar is older, then I think um, I will probably be far more um, uh, in retreat or concentrating on teaching or um, translating Tibetan texts, etc., etc., etc. I think life will become a little bit more monochrome once Oscar is older. I kind of trust that life does that for us as well, that we just, if we can go with the flow, then it unfolds as it's meant to be. So if anyone's listening right now, um, do you have any advice or, or any tips that you would leave with people on on kindness, compassion, or, you know, how to develop that? Oh, such a big subject. I think, first of all, I'd say that if, you know, I reflect on this time that we've all been through in the last year. And I think it's worth asking yourself at this point, what can you rely on? Because this year has been a year where a lot of the things that we thought we could rely on um, have been pulled away, isn't it? Yeah. I think kindness is something that you can rely on in any circumstances that you can rely on kindness. Uh, and if you can feel as if you, what you can rely on is your solid ground, something that's known then you can rely on it, right? I think it's good to think of kindness in that way. Ah, oh, this is something which will never let me down. Mm -hmm. I can rely on kindness you know, like it's the ground foundation. It's not the icing on the top of the cake. It's the ground foundation, right? So that, first of all, I think that, I think when you do uh, acts of kindness, however big, however small, please take a moment to savor how that feels in your heart. Don't dismiss the goodness and the joy that's come to you from it. Mm -hmm. It's important to realize that compassion and permanent happiness are linked. Mm -hmm.